October. Who has one? Yes. yes. Hey, Justin. My name Hi. is Harold. Um, my son's a big fan of yours. I'm um, Jake. Um, fortunately, he's in school and really cursing me out right now. But um, anyway, um, <laughs> some of his favorite signs, he really likes Clumsy Card House and um, Breakfast After 10. And he was wondering why there's um, two different versions of Breakfast After 10. Like one, you have an acoustic version, then you did it electric on the other album that came out. That's a good question. Uh, it's kind of the music business, you know. Uh, we put out uh, the answers uh, independently, you know. So I basically went into a studio and borrowed money from my mom and dad when I was probably like 16 and uh, started recording that album, and it was acoustic and fun and nice. And uh, then when we got signed to Universal, they really thought it had potential as a single, but they wanted us to re-release it and record it and beef it up, make it a rock song, add a second verse, you know, that kind of thing. So I was like, hey, I'm game. It's totally cool, you know. And now I've played this song so much, like, uh, oh, oh. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But but it's it's one of those songs that I've been playing since I was probably 14 years old. So it's gone through so many. It's like building a house, tearing it down, building a house, tearing it down. But um, but they're two different versions, and they both have uh, pretty pretty different feelings to them each each time, you know. So did I answer your question? Well, what was the you know story behind Breakfast After Ten? Um, I was actually going through a breakup in high school, like everybody goes up through breakups, and I was driving down the highway with my with my friend, and I had a, a my first car. It was a Volkswagen Rabbit. You know those like convertible ones, like from Can't Buy Me Love. You know those? Uh, I don't. Never mind. Um, <laughs> anyway, I was so hung up on this girl, and uh, and I was like, dude, how? What do I do? You know, I was in my first apartment. This is my new roommate, and he goes, man, just make her know how it feels to miss you. Don't call her. Don't don't ever call her again. Wait till she calls you, because I was one of those obsessed people. Like, hey, come on, you know. And uh, and he was like, just make her know how it feels to miss you. And it stuck in my head. And then I just went home and I wrote that song probably uh, like thirty minutes. And I came out and I was like, Jeff, man, thank you. And he goes, for what? And I was like, you just gave me my chorus to my first single ever. You know, so that's you know, it's a it's a breakup song. It's 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 a cutesy little breakup song. But on consent to treatment, you know, it's pretty little. It's a little bit rougher, you know. Yeah. Got another question over here. Did she call you? Who? Oh yeah, oh yeah, she called me. <laughs> I forgot all about. Oh yeah. Her. About two months later, she called me when that guy didn't work out, and I said, ah, "No, nah, no, nah, walk." Here's the hand. Any other? Any other questions? We, uh, uh, we got one over there, and we'll do this one first, and then we'll go over there. All right. Hi, Justin. Hi. My name is Kathy. Hi, Kathy. On your um, DVD where you talk about what the songs mean, mm -hmm. um, the calling you, I believe, um, you say it's about a, a woman who helped you through a very rough time, right. but then left because of some of the addiction issues that right. you had. Um, have you ever spoken to her since that? Time? No, we don't speak. Not at all? It, 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 no, no, it's, it's better that way because I'm just in a, um, I, I'm, I'm a complicated guy, you know, and I don't want to confuse anybody's life. I don't want to mess up anybody's life. People move on. People go on with their lives. And I don't want to be that dude 10 years later going, hey, how are you doing? And then start these things up again. I'd rather leave it alone and for her to be happy and go on with her life, you know. So I just choose to leave that alone, you know. So, yeah. You're in high esteem for that time she was with you. Yeah, she, it, it, was, it, was, it was a great friend, you know. It was a person that, that, that was very, very... Um, how do you say, supportive in every way. You know, it was a kind of a person that even when I would come home four days on methamphetamines, she would make sure that my heart was okay. That's love. Yeah. Or call the doctor and say, <laughs> you know, well, should I take him in? I'm being serious. You know, like, yeah. should I, you know, that kind of thing. Like, really cared. You know what I'm saying? Well, I was just a total selfish. Beep, 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 beep. <laughs> Got another question over here, Justin. Um, I was just wondering, how did you kick your addiction? Um, I don't think an addict ever kicks their addiction. I think it's a day-to-day -day process, and you have to go through it and kind of look at it uh, at face value. You know, um, it. Um, I, I will say that one thing that I did do was uh, when I when I got my second, I got dropped from Universal. Um, and got really heavy into stuff. And when I got a second chance and I met that guy right there. That guy being a... My manager. Paul, your manager? Yeah, he, he changed my life for the best. And right. so he's a good guy. Yeah. Give a hand. All right. 
Okay, one more question, and, uh, and so then... so I mean, and 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 he works for me, so I mean, I don't want to let him down. I don't want to let my band down. I don't want to let the sixteen employees that I have that go on the road with me down. I don't want to let my Universal rep down. You know what I'm saying? So there's other people in the world that back then I didn't think that way. You know what I'm saying? Back then I was just like everybody. <laughs> Well, I would go to Narcotics Anonymous, NA, NA, but we toured so much that it, there was really no time for rehab. It was more of reliance on other people to help me through it, you know, and that kind of thing. And uh, and I think an addict, once an addict, always an addict, you know. And you'll make mistakes, you'll fall down, you'll get back up, and you'll you'll go through life happier. Now that I have a daughter, it's like, pff, whatever, drugs, whatever, you know, that kind of thing. So, yeah. Another question over here. I'm actually an employee here at KRZ, I'm on the air, and I just have to say what I've said a million times on the air after almost every time I play your song. There is nobody in this business that wears eyeliner quite like you. <laughs> Thank you. That is one hell of a compliment. <laughs> and that is a great way to wrap up an interview, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, Are you even you. wearing the guy liner today? No, 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 I'm not wearing any eyeliner today, actually. I just it look this way when I'm tired. Oh, okay. So, <laughs> <laughs> Any I, more questions before we end it? Just a real uh, quick one. Okay. Um, what, this one right here? Yeah, sure. Okay. Sure. Hi. Um, I was wondering if being in a band with your brother, Jeremy, made you guys closer? Very, because he's my partner now. Like, we're our partner in business. I'm a very passive person. You know, if, if you were to come up to me and say, look, I don't have enough money to pay your band tonight, I'd go, it's okay. <laughs> and he'd be like, you me. <laughs> so, so I need him, you know what I'm saying? And plus, he's the kind of guy that when I'm going down the wrong way, he grabs my shirt, pulls me back, <laughs> that kind of thing. So, yeah, it's really cool. Awesome. He's a great guy. Thank you guys so much for coming. I really appreciate it. Oh, thank you. Justin from Blue October in the KRZ Uno Chicago Girl Spotlight Lounge. Um, I, uh, I am going to play the retro track coming up. I'm going to pick a song from the 80s to give away all that stuff I give away, including lunch from Uno Chicago Grill. Got a Valentine package coming up, too. And I picked a song today from a, a group from the 80s who you remind me of. Who? It's, it's that, oh, I can't say who. Oh, no. uh, you know, you got to guess the song, artist, and title when I play it. Oh, darn. But listen on your way out and see if. Is you it agree OMD? With me. It's not OMD, but you're close. Is it it's, When in Rome? Okay. <laughs> you got me. No. 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 I'm you're... sorry, but I'm just thinking of the right words to say. I know they don't sound the way I planned them to be. But if you wait around a while, I'll make you fall for me. I promise you. I promise you I will. Yeah. Wow. That's my jam, dog. Yeah. On the next album, yeah? <laughs> yeah? All right. No, then I have to pay them. <laughs> no, it's, it's, a, it's an alternative group from the, uh, from the 80s that ended up on a big movie soundtrack right, okay. in the middle of the 80s, and the singer has the same gravelly emotional voice that you have. And the, shh, shh, shh. Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> he knows who it is. He's heard yes. this before. All right, so that's coming up. And uh, once again, a big hand for Justin from Blue October. Oh!